Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Locke. Welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode, we're gonna have a look at the Led Zepp Punch 1x4, which is a light made by Exalux. Now this is a matte light product, it's bicolor. Now the difference between this and other matte lights is this has lenses over the LEDs which concentrate the beam down to 60 degrees, giving you a load of firepower. Now comparing it to other matte light products, this thing has the same form factor as say a matte light or light matte 2L, but it outputs up to two and a half times more firepower than a light matte 4. So if you're looking for something small, but with a load of firepower, this could probably be the light for you. Now, in terms of differences between this and the previous Exalux mat that I reviewed, this one has an improved controller, which is way simpler to use, and the controller can also power directly from a V-mount battery. All right, so before we get into too much detail, about a month ago, I reviewed this thing's big brother, which was the Exalux Led Zepp 2x4, which is literally twice the size. So in that episode, I covered things like the CCT accuracy, the white point delta UV accuracy, uh, color render, all of those details are covered in that video. It's not worth doing them again because it's exactly the same light engine. So if you want that information, go to that previous episode, you'll find it in that episode. All right, so let's go through the pros and cons with this unit. All right, so the first overwhelming pro is how much firepower it has. Now, in terms of me using this, I've been using it in situations where I wanna get a hair light or a backlight in on a boom arm in an interview. And my gut feeling is I need something like a two by four, something like a light mat four light, for example. But I don't have the space above the shot for it. I've only got the space for something that's one foot tall. Now, here's the thing I found. This has been giving me plenty of firepower in those situations. So in all of the setups where I've been using it as a hair light, it's been typically running at a maximum 60% brightness. So I'm not even running it at full power. So it packs a lot of punch for a small soft light fixture. Now in terms of its brightness, let's do some comparisons to a light mat 4, which is literally twice the size. All right, so this unit with no diffuser on, so raw LEDs, gives you roughly one and a half times more firepower than a light mat 4. But you've got to bear in mind, it is lensed. It is a 60 degree flood. It doesn't go any wider than that. Now, if you put a quarter diffusion on like I've got here, you get roughly 69% more brightness than you get out of the light mat 4. With the half diffusion, you get 29% more brightness than you get out of the light mat 4. And if you go a magic cloth over the front or a, few diff or, or a full diffusion, there's hardly any difference at all. You only get 6% more light level out of this. But that is 6% out of a fixture that is half the size. Now the next positive isn't really a positive. It's only a positive in comparison to the last Exalux LED zip that I reviewed. It's more of an improvement than a positive, and that is the controller. So with the previous light, the controller was a little bit difficult to use and unnecessarily over complex, whereas this unit is really straightforward to operate. Now it's got a uh, V-mount uh, plate on the top, so you can just directly mount your battery and fire the whole unit up from that one battery. Now in terms of ease of operation, uh, on your mode here, you've got a choice of off, manual and DMX, so very straightforward. Manual mode, one knob controls your brightness and the other knob controls your CCT. You know, really a, a bicolor light should be this simple to operate. It shouldn't be any more complicated than this. Now in terms of getting into more complicated operation with it, um, you can operate your effects by pressing the blue button here. So if you hold that down for five seconds, it turns the effects on. So we're currently in fire. If you want to change your effect, you press the button on this side to select the effects number and the effects are written on the top of the controller. So pretty straightforward to use. Now in terms of running this thing over the DMX, the same logic applies. If you hold down the effects button there, it'll toggle between the effects profile and the basic CCT profile. So your basic CCT operation profile is a two channel profile and your effects profile is a four channel profile. Now in terms of negatives, with the effects profile, there is no channel for triggering when your effects happen. Now in terms of pros for the DMX, it is both very responsive and very smooth when you're doing your dimming. But there are a few catches with this controller. Okay, so with this controller, 
you can run everything off a of V-mount battery, but it does come at a cost. The controller itself doesn't have any built-in CRMX. So if you want to run wireless uh, radio control to it, you're going to have to plug in a CRMX receiver. Now that brings me to my next possible negative. This unit has POD, which is power over DMX, which is a new standard which is coming out. So that enables compatible receivers to power themselves from the DMX port. So that is an awesome thing. However, I don't have anything that does that. All of my current receivers require USB power and the control box itself doesn't have a USB port to power that. Now we might as well finish off talking about the controller because there's only a few other things I haven't mentioned and they're all to do with this knob here which controls your CCT. Now in the manual mode, if you press that button, just single presses, it toggles between presets. So we've got 2700, 3200, 4300, 5600 and our top Kelvin of 6500. Now, if you hold that button down, it'll go into the menu system. So you've got to hold it for five seconds. Now, in the menu system, you can do things like adjust your loss of DMX signal behavior. You can do things like set your dimmer curve profile, stuff like that. But here's my honest advice. Stay out of that menu system because all of the presets are logical and, in my opinion, the best ones for the job. Now, in terms of mounting options for the controller, it does have these eyelets here and it does have a load of Velcro on the back and you can have a strap to attach it to your light stand, which I'm not a huge fan of because it'll rock around and bounce. Personally, I would have loved to have seen some sort of hard clamp option so you can mount it to the stand and not have it moving around. That would have been my preference. All right, now in terms of how quick and easy it is to set this light up, you can mount the controller directly to the back of the light. I would use the strap as a safety in case your Velcro doesn't, doesn't work. Connect the head lead to the light. And then connect the power supply in. And there we go, we are powered up and ready to run. Now, if you've got small V-mount batteries or a lot more faith in Velcro than I do, you could possibly just mount a V-mount onto the back, but you've got a lot more courage than me. Now, the last negative for me is the mat doesn't have a built-in safety point. So a lot of mats will have a little loop of uh, wire that you can hook a safety chain onto. So this doesn't have that. But let's get into the overwhelming positive now, and that's the build quality of this thing. So the, uh, the edges, uh, top and bottom, are metal reinforced. You've got the mounting plate here area is metal reinforced around it, so it's not gonna sag. The unit is very thickly constructed, so it's not gonna sag as well. And like a lot of mats, it has a protective screen protecting the LEDs from getting damaged. It also has six rigging points, one on each corner, center top and center bottom. Now, all of this build quality was a little bit of a negative with the two x four. So with the bigger light, it added up to a lot of weight. But with this light being half the size, all of this build quality doesn't make it too heavy. It's still very well constructed, very rigid, but light enough that you can get it out on a boom arm. And you've got all of that superior firepower, which sort of makes this unit for me a bit more logical to own than the bigger 2x4. Now in the previous Led Zep review, I said these lights were a bit more magenta than I'd like them to be. So my solution was to literally Velcro a 1 8 correction gel to the front. Now on all those setups that I did, the light was running at 60% maximum brightness, even through this correction gel. All right, so now let's have a look at how much it costs and what you get for your money. So it sells for about 2,725 euros. All right, so that probably sounds like a lot of money, particularly for bicolor. And that I think is because we've become accustomed to buying things that are made in China, whereas this is made in France. And also all of the accessories are DOP choice. So um, no corners have been cut. All right, so first off you get the bag. Now here's the thing I like about the bag. Look at this. The bag is actually designed really well and it sits upright, it doesn't fall over. The other thing I like about the bag is uh, all of the Velcro is quite well designed. So when you're taking things out, you're not fighting the Velcro like you do with other bags. And the handles, are, or the straps or the handles are long enough that you can transport it over your shoulder. So quite easy. Now, one thing to consider here is with how bright this unit is, and you know, it realistically compares to lights twice the size. 
how small this kit is. I mean, this is everything. How small this kit is for the amount of soft light firepower that you get. All right, so let's start going through the kit. Now, uh, this gives you some indication of how OCD I am, how organized I am. I love having everything organized. All right, so at this end, I've got the power supply. Now, the power supply is beautifully constructed. It's a Nutrix connector at that end, and the output side to the light is a four pin XLR, um, and also has a um, little handle for mounting it to the stand. It also has a thread mount here. So you could put a clamp on and clamp it to your stand that way. Okay, next one across is the controller. So the controller comes in its own little bag. Okay, so we've, uh, we've covered the controller in quite a bit of detail. Uh, nothing much else to talk about with the controller. Uh, next is all of the cables. Actually, you get a load of instruction manuals. Um, most of them are in French, so they've got easy to follow pictures, which is just as well. Okay, so power cables wise, you've got your Nutrix connector to your um, regional plug. So that plugs into your power supply and you've got two four pin XLR leads. You've got a long one and a short one. Okay, so you can use uh, either combination to connect the controller to the head or the um, controller to the power supply. Okay, over here you get the lollipop mount to mount the light to the stand. Now, in terms of the, the mounting, the mount on the back of the light has a deep enough receiver pin that you can use genuine KinoFlow products. So if you've got a lot of existing uh, mounts in that system, lollipop mounts, gooseneck mounts, things like that, they will all be compatible with this unit. All right, so here we've got our diffusers. So that's a, what's that? That's a half grid, a quarter grid, and a magic cloth, and that's all DOP choice. All right, so let's open up the main body of the bag now. We've got a snap box, a DOP choice snap box that goes on the front of the light. And finally, we've got the light itself. All right, so let's start going through some of the data I've collected, starting off with the power draw. Now I've measured the AC power draw at different Kelvins. And for those who are particularly technically minded, I've also measured the power factor unity. This is a closer look at the power draw at 5,600 Kelvin at different brightnesses. Now let's take a look at the brightness readings at a distance of one meter with the light set to 3,200 Kelvin with and without the different diffusers. The brightness readings were taken at an ISO of 400, a 25 FPS and a 1 50th of a second shutter. Here are the results at 5,600 Kelvin. These are the results for 3,200 Kelvin at a distance of three meters. And here are the results at 5,600 Kelvin at a distance of three meters. All right, so let's start testing the DMX. Now I've got this set up running off an eight bit profile receiving its commands via a Lumen radio receiver. Now to give you something to compare it to, I have a Titan tube also running off CRMX with an 8-bit profile. Both lights will be receiving their commands at the same time. We'll start off with instant on-off commands. Now we'll do programmed five second fades. Now some programmed two and a half second fades. Now some programmed one second fades.
Now some programmed half second fades. Now we'll do some instant CCT switches between 3200 Kelvin and 5600 Kelvin. Now some five second program CCT switches. Now some two and a half second CCT switches. Now some one second CCT switches. and some half second CCT switches. Okay, just for giggles, I've got this running in the fire effect mode over DMX, so I can uh, change the speed at which the effect happens. I can change the, uh, the color temperature of the fire. Of course, I can also change the brightness. Uh, I can change the effect, so this is called the tunnel effect, so it's like driving a car through a tunnel. All right, so that's another, that's another gear review done. Uh, the next episode will be on the Ninja 20, which is a 200 watt entry level uh, COB light, which also has DMX control. I'm currently meter testing the Aperture Lightstorm 600C, so hopefully that'll be the episode after. And the episode after that, depending on what I've had time to test, will either be the new DOP choice um, range of products or the, what's that thing down there, the Gemini uh, 1x2 hard. All right, see you on the next episode. Take care.